Mendez, we welcome you into America's Forum on this Wednesday morning. We continue to follow a developing story. As Miranda Khan just told us in the update, an Afghan soldier opens fire on U.S. troops in Jalalabad today. Uh, Miranda, this is a very disturbing story. Yes, it is indeed. RT.com is now reporting that one of those American soldiers was killed. Two others were wounded while the Afghan soldier in question was shot dead, but that information has not been confirmed. As we continue to monitor that, we should point out this incident uh, comes just after a visit by, a, by an official from the American embassy. Uh, perhaps even someone in the ambassador's personal party or the ambassador himself. But again, the details are sketchy. And when you depend on RT, Russia Today, right. we have to consider the source. Uh, the embassy, we should point out, tweeted that our ambassador was in Kabul and not near the area where the incident took place. At any rate, a lot is up in the air. And so for the latest on this story, we bring in Colonel Derek Harvey, a former intelligence officer and former advisor to General David Petraeus. Colonel Harvey, it's always good to have you Skype in from Tampa. You know the region, you know that country. I know the details are just coming in, but what strikes it from your unique perspective? Well, I think we're always going to have this persistent low-level threat of an insider attack. The Afghan government, the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Defense have worked real hard to do screening and to make sure that they have procedures in place. But the situation there is very volatile and it just takes one or two people on occasion for personal reasons or whatever to strike out. So, and the, the challenge here is you just have to be on guard, you have to be aware of your surroundings, the personal security team has to be prepared. And it, it's just the problem that we have there because of the nature of the environment. Can you tell us a little bit more about the region where the attack happened? Well, Jalalabad is in the eastern province, eastern part of Afghanistan. It's in a basically a bowl surrounded by mountains. It's in an area that has been heavily influenced by the Haqqani group and others over the years. So, you know, it is a volatile region, but the valley itself is, and the government there is actually fairly capable and, and supportive. So, you know, it takes one or two, that's all it takes for them to persuade or motivate someone to take an act of, of violence against a U.S. member, a coalition member, but they also strike out at the government officials there like this with insider attacks. It's not unique to an American presence. From your vantage point, Derek, is there anything that can be done to stop these kind of insider attacks? Well, I'm, I know that they've reviewed and reviewed and reviewed the procedure, standard operating procedures, tactics uh, that they use. Um, they're vetting, they're working closely with the Ministry of Interior. I think they've done just about everything they can and still maintain a level of engagement that is needed in order to continue to build governance, political outreach and partnership with the uh, Afghan security forces. You know, it's just going to be a risky environment for the near term. Do you expect things, I know a lot of people have been expecting things to improve in Afghanistan with the election of the, or the, election of the new president. Do you think things will get better now? How do you expect him to respond to this? Well, I think this is part of the, the normal friction. It's a tragedy that we have a loss of life in the wounded soldiers or other contractors, whatever they were. I think it's a little unclear at this point. But I think it's gonna get better because importantly, we've got Pakistan saying and doing the right things to try to move the Taliban forward in the negotiations and to put pressure on their side of the border. Ashraf Ghani has been very effective in reaching out to the government in Islamabad, Pakistan. The cooperation is increasing between the two countries, so I think that is going to bear fruit over time. At the end of the day, there's going to be these types of group, groups that are going to continue to be dead-enders, hardliners that are going to fight uh, regardless of the progress at the larger levels of the political dynamic. Derek, about 40 seconds. You're an intelligence expert. Do the Afghans, do the Americans, do we need counterintelligence within these uh, Afghan units? Definitely you need good counterintelligence you need to continue to reevaluate and vet people you need to understand and have you know, reporting going on from inside the chain of command about people that might be behaving strangely 
Usually someone has gone home and been convinced or motivated by something such as leaving Jalalabad where they were with a unit. Their family that happens to live in Pakistan get radicalized during their leave for a couple of weeks and then they come back and they strike out. We have to watch this closely for sure. Fair enough, Derek. We're going to ask you to stay right there. When we come back, Russians hacking into 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We'll talk about it right after this. With that level of access that they've got, they've got the ability to see everything that occurs on that network. They've got the ability to exfiltrate data off that network. And probably most important, Anderson, they've got the ability to actually destroy components of that network. Former FBI mm -hmm. Assistant Director Sean Henry on CNN yesterday warning that the breach of the White House computer system could produce devastating effects. Miranda, there's word out the Russians may have their fingerprints all over this. Yeah, Mr. Henry went on to say the hackers may have been working for the Russians, but also they could have been operatives who turned over information to the Russian government. Mm. For more on this story, let's bring back Colonel Derek Harvey Skyping in from Tampa. Colonel, uh, what leads us to believe Russia is involved in this hacking case? Well, clearly they must have some insight as to being able to track back to the sources and the networks and the identifiers that they can work very, very easily back through the systems to see where they came from. And there's quite a, a body of knowledge that's been developed that gives us great insights into these Russian affiliated networks and the cutouts that work with Moscow in a number of areas. This is not just one breach. We are in a day-to-day -day persistent war on the web with elements coming out of the Russian Federation. And I think that's something that Americans just don't appreciate. We are actually at war in the World Wide Web. Deputy National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes was also on CNN, and he tried to ease fears about what information was actually stolen. We want you to take a listen and get your reaction to what he had to say. The fact of the matter is, we have different systems here at the White House. So we have an unclassified system, and then we have a classified system, a top secret system. That is where the sensitive national security information is, the classified information is. That was a secure system. Uh, so we do not believe that our classified systems uh, were compromised. So should we feel better? Because we've also heard reports saying that these hackers may have had access to the president's schedule, which was not supposed to be accessible. What I think is, is not stated by Mr. Rhodes is that on the unclassified system, which is separated, compartmented from the secret and the top secret systems, is on that unclassified system, there's a tremendous amount of very important information, correspondence, insights, planning, outreach to a range of foreign government officials, congressional leaders, people in the Pentagon that provide detailed knowledge about what the administration's thinking. That can be very valuable to hackers or foreign governments. Now, Derek, you, you said just a second ago that in essence, we're at war on the World Wide Web, on the internet. Now, I remember 10 years ago in Congress, we heard that every day the Pentagon was under cyber assault. We thought principally from the Chinese. Is the White House the new front, or do you think this has been going on for some time, this effort to gain access to White House computers? This is going on on a near day-to-day -day basis with U.S. government departments, be it the State Department, the White House, Department of Defense, Central Command headquarters down here in Tampa. This is what goes on every day, and you have to be vigilant. The concern is, what we don't know about how they're getting in and what they're leaving behind when you're trying to sweep clean your systems of, of anything that they may have left behind that they can activate later on. So what needs to be done to prevent this from happening? Are we just too little too late? Well, we have a very uh, new but developing cybersecurity program here at the University of South Florida, and we're looking at this issue and others. It's very complicated for NSA, the U.S. government, in or to develop a comprehensive, integrated plan with the authorities that allow the government 
and private parties to take actions against this. We are very discombobulated or disconnected in our response today. And I think, J.D., you understand how hard it is to bring all of this together so we can have a defensive system across networks and be able to communicate. Well, not only challenges there in terms of cybersecurity, but in more, quote, traditional areas. We've got about a minute 15 remaining, Derek. I want to get to the whole Iran deal. Uh, President Obama speaking to NPR yesterday had a fairly interesting take on this. Let's listen. Essentially, we're purchasing for 13, 14, 15 years assurances that uh, uh, the breakout is at least a year. And then in years 13, 14, it is possible that those breakout times would have been much shorter. But at that point, we have much better ideas about what it is uh, that uh, their program involves. Well, we've got about 20 seconds here, Colonel. Out years in budgeting are false. Out years in terms of uh, a, a treaty with Iran. Did you understand what the president was trying to say there? I don't think we should have any assurance or, co or confidence that we can guarantee that we have a year warnings time about a breakout. It doesn't make sense based upon this agreement. Derek Harvey, as always, we appreciate your insights and analysis as a former colonel in Army Intelligence for offering some intelligence to us. When we come back, that disturbing video of the shooting in South Carolina, the implications for law enforcement.